Hi, this is the first tutorial looking at the user interface in AutoCAD 2012. We're just going to look at the basic areas around the screen because it's quite a lot more complicated than what you're probably used to. So let's start with the big red A. Here we've got our typical basic commands that you'll find in any Windows application. So we've got new drawings, open a drawing, save, save as, um, publishing, printing, etc, etc. A lot of these you can also get from other areas too. We click out of that to close it. We've got the usual quick access buttons at the top as well. So new, open, save, save as, plot, etc, etc. And it's possible to add to that list. The next thing we're going to look at is the ribbon, which is this bit that runs all the way across the top of the screen. We start off with the home ribbon visible. You can see the home tab at the top here. And there are several more, well, a lot more ribbons that it's possible to look at with all sorts of different things in them for the various things that we need to do when we're drawing. If we go back to the home ribbon, you can see it's divided into a bunch of panels. So we've got the draw panel, modify, layers. Those are the three that we will start using first. Then we'll move on to annotation and we'll look a little bit at blocks and we'll also be picking up on some of the properties and utilities that we can do here. Typically to access a command you just click on the command Some of the commands open up new ribbons. So if we click on this one, which is Hatch, that opens up a whole Hatch Creation ribbon, which we can use to change our Hatch patterns. So we can choose different Hatch patterns. We can change the scale of the Hatch. We can change the angle of the Hatch. to get different effects in our drawing and we can close the hatch area when we've finished that. The next area we need to look at is this big black space in the middle. This is our drawing space and this is where everything's going to actually happen. And you can see in the drawing space we've got these little tabs at the bottom. Typically AutoCAD will come out with a group of tabs at the bottom. Model space is where we do all our drawing. The layouts are where we produce the end result. And at the moment we've just got two identical A4 layouts. We'll look at how to deal with layouts and creating your drawing as a sheet of paper in a later tutorial. The next area down is the command line. Now this is a really useful space. It's somewhere you need to keep an eye on. Because when you click on a command in one place, you'll see that things change in the command line and it's starting to ask for information. In this case, it's the center point for the circle or we can create a circle using different parameters. So if we wanted to change the way we're making our circle to say three point, we can type in 3P, enter to confirm that. That's the first point on the circle, second point on the circle, third point on the circle and we can see our circle appearing and all of that information was was being asked for down the bottom here in the command line if you want to see what you've done before you can just move up and you can see all of those different little bits but usually having about three lines visible is is plenty the next area we need to look at are our quick changes for some of the settings in our screen one of the things that I always do is turn off the grid. I find it a perishing nuisance when you're doing architectural drawing. The grid actually doesn't help you a great deal. The next option along, this is ortho. If you're in ortho mode and you go into a line command, you can't draw a diagonal line. It will only go horizontally or vertically. Do you see? A more useful setting is polar, which is this one. Polar tracking is the one I usually have on, and you can't have ortho and polar on at the same time. With polar switched on, a line will try to snap to a specific angle, and usually it starts off set at 90 degrees. You can see you've got the green dotted line. It's quite happily doing that. We've still got our line command open. If I point at the polar button and do a right click, that opens me up a bunch of options. So I can change the angle of the polar snap. If I've got 30 degrees open, it'll snap to any um, multiple of 30 degrees. So in addition to going up, across and down, you can see it will also, can you see it's snapping 
to a 30 degree line. So if you want to draw hexagons and that kind of thing, 30 degrees is good. Uh, 22 and a half degrees is good for octagons, etc, etc. The next box here is Object Snap, and again that's really useful as we're drawing things. Um, Object Snap has a whole bunch of settings, so if we do a right click there, you can see it'll snap to endpoints, midpoints, centers of circles, nodes, which we'll talk about later, quadrants on circles. Let's explore some of those. So it'll snap to the end of a line and that's with a, a square snap box. You can see we've got this half crisscross snap box, that's a nearest snap, so it'll snap onto a point on that line nearest to where we've picked. Here the triangle is the midpoint, so that's snapping to the centre point of that line, and it's possible also we should be able to find a perpendicular, and that's a little perpendicular symbol. So we've got lots and lots of different snap options. It'll pick up on quadrants of circles, so the exact side, the exact top, it'll pick up on the centre of a circle. So sometimes you don't want it turned on, and you can, in the middle of a command, switch it off, and then I can draw a line to somewhere near there without it automatically snapping to the closest available position. Don't worry about the next one, that's 3D object snap. Um, bit advanced for us. Object snap tracking is where the cursor will follow close to and line up with an object snap. Showing and hiding line weight is one, if you've changed your line weights in your drawing you can click on that and it'll show you how thick the lines are. Transparency we don't tend to need a great deal and quick properties can be useful if we click on that to turn it on. If we select an entity on our piece of paper like that, you can see it comes up with a little box giving us some information about the line, the colour, layer, line type and length. If I click on the hatch, we get a different range of information about it because it tells us the important stuff that we need to know. Having these boxes popping up the whole time while you're drawing can be a perishing nuisance though, so most of the time when we're drawing we'd have that switched off. The last little bit that we need to look at is this section down here. We don't use it a huge amount until we're starting to create our drawings. If we go into one of the layouts, you can see this has changed to paper. It's moved us into paper space from model space. So if we move to a layout, you can see we've got our sheet of paper and we've got a, a shape in the middle, which I can click on and change the size of and that shows us a little bit more of our drawing. But this is as if we've got a sheet of glass over the drawing. If we want to reach in and actually add to that drawing, if you look down here, I can click on paper, and I've now got a thick line round the edge. The cursor is normal when I'm inside that thick line, but move it outside, and I don't have the crisscross cursor at all. And then I've got the same facility to add extra lines within that space. And I can also delete things. I'll delete the hatching and if we go back into model space you can see the hatching has now gone along with those lines that I took out just before. The other way we can change from model space to paper space, if we're in model space we just double click outside and we're back in paper space, so down here it's changed to paper. Double click inside our viewport, we're back in model space, this has changed to model. The other thing we can do from here is set the scale within our viewport. So if we wanted it to be half size, that's blown it up a bit. If we go to 1 to 5, say, that's made it smaller and we can see the whole of our drawing. Double click outside and we're sorted. If I turn on quick properties, this is just a quick one, click on the viewport, I can then lock that viewport and then if I go into it I can't actually change, I can't, can't move anything around inside it but I can still draw extra bits of drawing. So that's a quick walk around the AutoCAD interface. Some of the rest of these buttons we'll have a look at in the future. Thanks for your time. Next time we'll really start drawing properly.